Hello everyone, welcome to iCritic Live. My name is Kevin T. Rodriguez. I'm the film critic of iCritic.net. And this is the podcast where we talk about movies, pop culture, and life in between. And this is definitely one of those life in between topics. You may notice we are not opening this episode with the music. And that is entirely intentional. Some of you listeners may also notice that we have put an explicit content warning on this episode. This is not because of any crass language or jokes or anything of that nature. It is because the topic at hand is going to be a very sensitive one. And we do want to start by saying that, well, depictions of self-harm will be discussed. And if you are feeling suicidal or in dire need of assistance, you can now call the National Suicide Prevention Hotline at 988. So it is a new number that provides resources for people who are having suicidal thoughts and have mental health issues. And if you are currently feeling this way, call 988 immediately. So this one hurt me a quite a bit um, because I am a fan of the work of manga creator Hinako Ashihara. She wrote a very good series, in my opinion, called Sand Chronicle. And it was, so this was a story where a couple of teenagers bond over personal family turmoil including, uh, ironically, um, suicide. Uh, They do fall in love, but because of what's going on in their life, things are just complicated. Like, these are teenagers who are not thinking about everyday things that most teenagers are. They're not thinking about the latest video game or the latest Harry Potter book. They are not planning to go to the movies very often. Their big concern is people they have lost and life events that have changed them drastically and it is a very mature manga series Um, I believe it is 10 books long however I also think although don't quote me on this one I believe you can read this on the Viz Media manga app it's $2.99 a month and I believe you can read Sand Chronicles there Now, she has written other works that um, were bestsellers. She did write Forbidden Dance, a series I personally didn't like very much, but it was a huge hit. And she also wrote Peace, Kanajo no Kyoku, which um, I have not read, but this won some manga awards, also 10 volumes. And apparently the plot, according to Wikipedia, is after learning that her former high school classmate Haruko Origuchi has died from an illness, Mizuho Suga meets her other classmate, he, uh, blah, sorry, Hikaru Narumi, at the funeral. Back in their high school days, Hikaru was famous for being a playboy, and they both had to keep their relationship a secret. Um, so that was... A series and apparently it was a very good series. Now her most recent series at least that I can tell was a manga called Sexy Tanaka-san um, and unlike most of her works which got adapted into manga this was adapted for live action. I do not know if you can stream anywhere. In fact, I will look this up while, um, you know, we're talking about this. But apparently she was not very happy when she saw the results of the show. She wrote an extended blog about how she wasn't consulted that much, that she had major objections to things that were changed in the show and that maybe she was able to convince them to like keep the first four episodes more or less um intact from what she had written however 
then it went off in its own direction. Then she kind of had to come in and write the last two episodes when they deviated dramatically from what she had written in her manga. And she expressed huge disappointment in that. Now, she deleted that blog post like a couple days later because she didn't want to attack anyone per se. But it was shortly after deleting that blog post that she went missing. And, well, when they found her, she had apparently died of an apparent suicide. So, here's the thing. I mourn this loss. I mourn this loss because she created manga series that I greatly enjoyed and that touched my life. I mourn for the works she will never create now. I mourn for her family, who I do not know, but are clearly um, suffering. I, I don't mourn in any particular order. It's just such a sad thing. And, you know, one of those things, when I look back at her previous... Um, works and all the heavy themes that they dealt with you know definitely this event definitely makes you wonder if she's been struggling with mental health problems for a while I don't know but yeah it's it's just so that this is just so sad I, this one's actually kind of hard. This episode's hard for me to talk about because I'm trying to um, keep it together. You have to keep this professional, of course. Oh, and by the way, the live action sexy Tanaka-san is streaming in America on Plex. If uh, anyone wants to watch that, I... I'm not aware of any American publisher releasing the manga. But this is so, I mean, and when you talk about things like this, some people are going to go like, oh, well, you didn't know that person personally. Um, you know, why are you concerned about the works you're not going to get any more? She has family. And, you know, here's the thing. Yes, I do acknowledge that one of the ways that we react to news is we react based on how we are affected. And I liked her manga. And Sand Chronicles in particular was a very, very good one. It, it's one that I still recommend to people this day. And the idea of her not making any more is extremely sad to me. I, I actually look at the cover for Sexy Tanaka-san, which I had not heard of before this happened, probably because it is not available in America to my knowledge. And just from the cover alone, it's like this looks very different than what she normally made. And even though some people might consider it tacky to pick up the manga now, I hope somebody picks it up because I really want to read this now. Um, it, it just looks so different from anything she had previously done. And that's exciting to me. And it's it actually looks really fun, to be honest. Like most of her works were dreary and sad. And, you know, there's definitely a place for that. But I look at the artwork for this and it looks a little sexy and a little you know, risque and maybe a little com comedic. I mean, it it looks very different. And it, I, it's like, I, man, I would really like to read this because she seemed to be going outside of her comfort zone and that that's great. Like that is, it's great to see creators go outside their comfort zone. But whatever potential she had for future series that were different are are gone now. Like they will never be realized. 
and I'm not even sure if Sexy Tanaka-san was finished or not because when I go to the Wikipedia page, um, it says its chapters have been compiled into seven uh, books as of October 2023, and it says the original run is August 5th, 2017 to the present, which suggests that maybe the series wasn't um, wasn't finished yet. And I don't know if the live action series adaptation had anything to do with this. I, I am fully aware that manga artists are way, way overworked. Like the manga industry is brutal and I am much more in favor of the Shonen Jump Plus model because uh, most publishing industries in Japan, it's weekly comics. You have to produce a 12 to 16 page comic every single week. And uh, you know, if you want to do it correctly and have it with good artwork and stuff, I mean, it takes time. You spend hours upon hours laying it out and you're writing the story and you're trying to think two steps ahead. Sometimes that's why long running mangas there's like stretches of extended fight periods because the authors just don't know where to go with this, but they can't really take a break. Breaks are frowned upon in this industry. So they just keep doing things until they figure it out. And Shonen Jump Advance is like, okay, look, we're gonna do this. We're gonna do it like on a bi-weekly basis. So every two weeks is a new chapter. And if you're a big enough creator, maybe one chapter a month. And I also believe it's mostly digital, so that gives them the freedom to do that. They can play around with the publishing schedule a little bit more. I am a fan of that. And I can, unfortunately, um, I could see this being a case of Karoshi, which is death by overwork. And one of the things you have to understand about Japan is that it's a very polite nature. That's one of the reasons why the blog post was probably taken down because you don't ruffle the boat. You don't shake the boat. You don't ruffle the feathers. You don't drop the eggs. You keep things polite. She clearly cared enough about what was happening with the live action show to speak out against it and to be public about it. That probably got her into trouble with the publishers, and she probably took it down to keep the peace. But I wonder, like, in the midst of, like, drawing this series that you love so much to it being adapted in a way where not only was it wrong from your perspective, but that you felt so disrespected, like you pour your heart, soul, sweat, blood, tears into this manga. Like, you live and breathe this manga. And to have your claims dismissed, I, I can see that being extremely, extremely discouraging. And I, I don't know, again, if this is exactly what... There might have been other reasons she wrote about mental health and depression and suicide in her works. I mean, they say, write what you know. So she must have had some experiences with this. I don't know exactly, but... It is just so sad that this is what it came to, that this established manga creator who clearly had more stories to tell, who clearly still had a passion for what she was doing, like decided life was too hard. And it, it makes me want to cry. So... I wanted to make this podcast episode not only to express my love and gratitude for her work, but these are the situations where you do want to remind people that you are loved. Suicide is a permanent solution to a temporary problem and to reach out for help. Again, the Suicide and Crisis Lifeline, you dial 988 they will help you out with resources. Suicide is not the answer. It never is. And it's just, it's just sad for everyone. And 
look, if we're feeling it as readers and as fans of her work, not even her personally, we don't know her personally, just imagine her friends and family. This has got to be one of the roughest times they will ever experience. So this is normally where I would plug the various projects we do, but we're going to instead end and say take care of yourselves, call your loved ones, reach out to a friend if you need to, dial 988 if you're in dire straits. And remember, everyone is fighting a demon or a problem that you are not aware of. And we need to realize that no matter what kind of success that we perceive people to have, they can be having their own struggles just as much as we are. With that said, everyone, please take care of yourself and we will talk soon.